Hello Hunters, and welcome back to Super Fan Natural. Hunters, there's plenty of reasons to watch Supernatural. It's got action, comedy, drama, romance, not to mention some of the hottest people you will ever see. However, if there's one thing the show has more than anything else, it's D&D. Not Dungeons and Dragons, Death and Destruction. The show is steeped in blood and guts, which makes sense, after all, it's about monsters that eat people and the hunters that fight them. Most episodes produce between 1 and 10 corpses, however, there are plenty that go beyond that, and by the end of the series, the show has a body count that's well beyond quadruple digits. So I thought it would be fun to identify and list the 10 episodes with the most kills. I need to give a huge thanks to anyone and everyone who contributed to the Table of Death on one of the Supernatural wikis, because it made this video so much easier. Also, since I'm already copying dead meat, why not include awards? For each episode, I'll pick one kill or set of kills to crown as the best. I was going to call this the Golden Colt Award or the First Place First Blade, but nah, let's just keep it simple. First, we have to establish some ground rules for what does and doesn't count as a kill. For me, deaths can happen on or off screen. They just have to A, happen within the time frame of the episode in question, and B, they have to actually result in death. So old bodies and graves don't count nor do instances where creatures are just neutralized, like horsemen getting their rings cut off, or ghosts getting their bones burned. I think those are pretty reasonable conditions, so now let me give you a few that you may or may not agree with, starting with my stance on possession. Almost every time an angel or demon gets killed, it's possessing an innocent person who gets taken out in the process. So should all possessions count as two? Well, with angels, yes, because as we know, it's extremely rare for them to inhabit a dead body. However, demons only count as one unless we have on-screen proof that their meat suit's host was still in there. Next, what to do when it comes to big, vague numbers. There are several episodes that probably have pretty high body counts, however, we can't put any real exact number or close estimates because the amount is too vague. Some examples would be Mystery Spot, where Dean dies a bunch of times, and Caged Heat, where Cass smites an entire prison of monsters. Finally, I'm not counting real historical deaths. This rule really only applies to the episode where Balthazar unsinks, then resinks the Titanic. Putting aside the weirdness of time travel, it just feels wrong to put real tragedy on a list where I talk about how rad it is that a bunch of people are dying. For our first entry on the list, we're going to go with Season 5, Episode 14, My Bloody Valentine. This rather dour episode is kind of unique because it's one of the few where all the victims are human, and they're all taken out by the same thing. In this case, Famine's Influence, which causes 22 people to consume until it kills them. Still, there's plenty of variety in how they go out. We've got two people who eat each other, three that eat bullets, one who stuffs himself with Twinkies, one who drowns in booze, and 15 who gorge on food, alcohol, pills, and, uh, money? Okay, it is possible to add up to 8 deaths to this entry, which would move it higher up the list a bit. There are 5 demons that get consumed by Famine, another two who get their blood drank by Sam, and then at the end of the episode, Famine himself gets neutralized. I don't count any of those because the demons seem to still be alive inside Famine for a while, we don't have any evidence that Sam killed the pair that he fed off of, and it's actually confirmed later in the season that Famine is still alive in some way. So yeah, I'm sticking with 22. The first Best Death Award goes to the couple in the opening because it's bizarre, brutal, and kinda hot. We don't have to go far for the ninth spot. In fact, it's actually the very next episode. Like the previous entry, Season 5, Episode 15, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, features people eating each other due to the influence of a horseman. Except this time it's death, and the flesh is being nommed on by undead zombies. This episode has three living humans getting got by the end, two by bites and one by strangulation. The rest of the deaths are zombies who all take headshots. Now, by the end of the episode, all the walking dead are dead, but we're never given an exact number of how many there were in the first place so I can only count the ones that we see get popped on screen. This gives us 20 zombies, and brings our total to 23, so just one more than the previous entry. Picking a best death award for this one was tricky, but after consulting the committee, we've decided to give it to Karen Singer. This is Bobby's wife. Her original death is what pushed him into hunting in the first place. Also, it's super crushing to watch him have to put her down again. Moving on to the 8th spot, we're still in Season 5, with the penultimate episode, Two Minutes to Midnight. This is an episode you would expect to have a high body count, not just because it features two horsemen, one of which is death, but also because at this point, this was going to be the second to last episode of the entire series. Well, I'm happy to report that it succeeded. 
Of those who passed, 14 were humans, 3 who succumbed to Pestilence's superbug, 1 guy who gets ripped apart by Croats, and 10 who gets sniped by Death himself. In addition, we see demons on the list for the first time, as there are three in this episode who all end up getting poked with the knife. Finally, we have several Croats, or people who are infected by the Croatoan virus, all of whom end up sucking on lead. Now, some people may argue that Croats should count twice, once for when they're infected, and then again when they get put down. There is an argument there, but I'm just gonna go with them getting killed once, because the infection doesn't seem to kill its victims. So, we can add 9 Croats to the list, bringing our total to 26. This episode's best death goes to the asshole who death kills, because how could it not? It caps off death's intro. It was the obvious answer. The seventh spot goes to Season 9, Episode 11, Firstborn. And let me tell you, this one is full of firsts. It marks the first appearance of the first blade, as well as the titular firstborn, Cain, and his mark. It's also the first entry on this list, whose count is a little... Uh, messy. What do I mean? Well, things start off normal enough. We get two human deaths, one by flaying and the other by stabbing. We also get seven demon slayings, four by the knife, and three from Cain's awesome demon smiting power. That's all fine. However, things get complicated once Cain lets a bunch of demons into his house so that he can smite them. Not only is it really difficult to count exactly how many demons there are, we also don't technically know for certain that he got them all. Like, it's safe to assume, especially since the episode established that no one can leave Kane's house if he doesn't want them, but still, there's room to argue. So then why include it on this list? Well, because the show does all but say he'll wipe them out, and while it's real hard to get an accurate count, we get a ballpark number which the wiki page clocks in at 18, and I agree. So that would bring the total to 27 kills, one more than the previous entry. I'll give the award to the demons that Dean dispatches in Kane's kitchen. The red smiting effect is real cool, but it's hard to top a fight with actual choreography. Rounding out the bottom five, in sixth place, we have another action-packed penultimate episode, with season 13, episode 22, Exodus. This episode takes place almost entirely within the apocalypse world, where angels are actively attempting to wipe out humanity. Since angels are the main enemy, they make up most of the kills in this episode. And since that also kills the human they're wearing, each angel kill counts for two. In this episode, 12 angels get put down, 6 are poofed by Lucifer, 2 get blasted by Jack, and the last 4 get poked with angel blades, including that universe's weird German Castiel? Honestly, this is one of the weirdest things in the entire show. Why is he German? Did this Jimmy grow up in Germany? Did he get abducted by the Thule Society? Apparently this was a decision by Misha Collins, but like, why? Anyway. In addition to the angel kills, there are three human deaths caused by angel dive bombing, which you can add to the 12 vessels to get 15 human deaths. Finally, we get to put an archangel on the list, since Gabriel gets poked by the archangel blade, and this time he's dead for realsies. However, this one only counts for one, since we eventually learn that the archangel blade spares the vessel, which means that there's a good chance that Gabe's meat suit survived at least until the end of the episode. This brings our total to 28. Best death will go to Weird German Cass. Misha on Misha violence is no laughing matter, but it is fun to watch. To kick off the top 5, let's go to Season 7, Episode 6, Slash Fiction. This is another one of those rare episodes where all the victims are human, and the Winchesters don't actually cause any of their deaths. In this instance, it's Leviathans doing the deed, although two of them are disguised as the boys in order to frame them. Since that's their angle, these chompers rely on the Second Amendment to carry out most of their kills, ultimately capping 29 people, however not all of them bite bullets. Instead, the last five get chomped on by the Levi's, and at least two get completely devoured. That brings our total to 34 kills, all human. Now, this episode does include three Leviathans getting beheaded, however since this doesn't actually kill them, they don't go on the list. In fact, there won't be any Leviathans on this list. If that bums you out, well, the next pick might cheer you up just a little bit, but first, best death. I'm gonna be honest, this one doesn't have any that really stand out to me, so let's just give it to the police officer who gets eaten. So no leviathans on this list, but I can give you the next best thing in Season 6, Episode 19, Mommy Dearest. This episode revolves around Eve, who's sort of a leviathan, as she tries to create the perfect monster by experimenting on the citizens of a small town. Her first test involved giving a guy a kind of shape-shifting virus 
that causes anyone he infects to turn into him, then later they get a deadly fever. This infection claims the lives of six people. Next, Eve turns a bar full of people into rabid hybrids that are later called Jefferson Starships. These people turn on and feed on each other before they all burn up and die, which adds 16 starships to the count. Eve goes on to convert 15 more people into starships, 3 who end up getting decapitated, and 12 that get microwaved by Castiel's powers. Cass also cooked a vampire at the start of the episode, so we get to add one bloodsucker to the list. Eve herself bites it after biting Dean and ingesting some phoenix ash, which burns up her insides and leaves her dead. Now, I was and still am conflicted about whether or not Eve's vessel should go on the list, since we don't really know how her possession works. However, since Eve is related to the Leviathans, and they claim that Cass dies as soon as his body gets taken over, I decided to leave her off the list since she was possessed in an earlier episode. We finish off the episode with three more kills in the form of the Silver Brothers and their uncle, who get their hearts ripped out by demons off screen. This episode does have several instances of people appearing to be killed by monsters before they themselves pop back up as a monster, so there's a good argument to be made that some of them should count twice, but I'm just gonna count them once, so our final count sits at 42. I'll give the best death to Eve, since we really don't see monsters die off from poisoning very often. Okay, so I know that some of you have been disappointed that we've been in the double digits this whole time. Well, the season 7 premiere, Meet the New Boss, changes that. Actually, it changes a lot of things for the series, and it does it with a lot of death, though death himself doesn't cause any death. All but one of the kills in this episode is doled out by Castiel using his newfound god powers, and most of the dead are angels, with a few humans added for variety. We'll start with the people. First, we get this homophobic preacher who Cass chokes with his own tongue in a very satisfying scene. Later, Cass goes on to slaughter 10 people involved with the Michelle Walker campaign, including the fake senator herself. We do hear about other people getting smote over the radio, however there's no concrete number given, so I can't count any of those. In terms of on-screen angelicide, we see a whopping 42 dead angels. Since these guys are in heaven, we don't need to count them twice because it's possible that they're not in vessels, however it wouldn't really matter if we did. See, Godsteel's massacre went well beyond these scrubs. We don't get a solid number for how many he smote, however, later in the season, Haster claims that it was in the thousands. Now, is it right for me to use a vague number of off-screen kills to inflate the number of deaths? Yes, because it's my video, and also, this was a really important event in the show's history. So, we're soaring right into the quadruple digits. Because she said thousands, that could indicate multiple thousands or just over 1,000, I personally want to aim low as possible as to not puff up the count too much, so I'm going to be adding 1,001 angels, which includes the 40 or so from earlier. That brings our total to 1,012 stiffs. But wait, we've got one more angel to count. After getting rid of the soul power, Cass himself allegedly gets devoured by the leviathans that held on inside him. So, we reach a total count of 1,013. Best death for this one is tough. On the one hand, the shot of all the smote angels was chilling and epic, but on the other hand, it's so satisfying watching the homophobic preacher get choked. I don't know, let's give it to the holy hypocrite. In second place, we have another episode with an off-screen slaughter that really pads the total. But unlike the other entries, we can actually get a relatively accurate number using real-world data. The silver medal goes to Season 5, Episode 10, Abandon All Hope, which has 29 on-screen deaths made up of 25 demons, 2 that get shot with the colt, and 23 that get sacrificed by Lucifer. That number also includes 2 hellhounds, one of which gets shot by the colt, and the other that gets exploded. And finally, there's 2 humans, Joe Harvel, who gets mauled by a hellhound, and her mother Ellen, who sacrifices herself. So right off the bat, this episode has a pretty good count. However, it gets a lot better when you realize that most of the episode takes place at the site of a massacre. Before Team Free Will rolls into town, the Satan Squad has already sacrificed all the town's women and children for the death ritual. Now, we don't have any way of knowing how many people there were, except yes we do, because this episode takes place in Carthage, Missouri, which is a real town. So if we just take a peek at the 2010 census, we can see that there were 14,378 people living there. And since this episode takes place at the end of 2009, that's a pretty accurate number. So if we factor in all that, we get a total of 14,380 humans, 
25 demons, and 2 hellhounds for a total of 14,407 deaths. The best death goes to Ellen Harvell, and I don't really think I need to explain why. Before we get to the number one deadliest episode, I want to give a quick shout out to the episode with the lowest kill count. Or rather, episodes, because it's a six or seven way tie. It might be hard to believe, but there's actually several episodes that don't include any kills. The Monster at the End of the Book, When the Levee Breaks, Sacrifice, Inside Man, Alpha and Omega, and Mamma Mia are all episodes where nobody dies at all. There's one more episode that's arguably deathless. The season 15 episode, The Trap, features several on-screen kills. However, those all take place in the vision that God shows Sam. So I don't think that counts, since none of that actually happened. Alright baby, now on to the gold. Which episode of this murder-filled series featured the most death? Fittingly, the series saved its most costly Mega Massacre for the third to last episode, and almost all of the kills are caused by God himself. Throughout season 15, Chuck does a lot of killing. In fact, there are entire episodes where he wipes out entire universes. Those probably should be on the list, but A, we don't actually know how many people lived in any of those universes, and B, that would be really boring. However, in the third to last episode, Despair, God turns his power on the main universe, and by the end of the episode, he has erased all but four or five beings besides himself. Let me repeat, he killed off every single creature, supernatural or regular natural, except for Sam, Dean, Jack, the Archangel Michael, and maybe Lucky the Dog. Obviously, we don't know how many demons or vampires or goblin sharks there were, but we do know that there were roughly 7.7 .7 billion people who got poofed. So yay, big number, but wait, there's more. God didn't just kill off the living, he also murdered the dead. By which I mean he erased every soul in heaven, hell, purgatory, and the veil. Now, there's no way of knowing how many peeps were hanging out in the veil. However, we do have some rough numbers for the other three. Heaven is easy, since Naomi was kind enough to just tell us that as of 2018, there were 46,750,000,000 souls in paradise. Things get a little trickier with hell. However, thanks to Crowley's remodel, we know that as of 2010, there were at least 6,611,527,124 damned souls. Unfortunately, there wasn't a helpful sign for purgatory. I mean, people throw out guesses in the millions, but nothing concrete. However, I realized that if I wanted a minimum, I could go through the wiki page and count up every monster death, since those would all end up in Purgburg. So we can add 234 dead monsters to the count. We also need to count two deaths that weren't caused by God. This episode marks the final, actual death of Castiel after he gets consumed by the Empty along with Billy. So put all that together and we've got at least 7.7 .7 billion living humans, 52,361,527,124 dead humans, 234 dead monsters, one angel, and one death who all get killed off in this one episode. Good lord, that's gotta be some kind of a record, right? Our final best death award goes to Cass, because how could it not? His speech is beautiful, he gets to go out on his own terms, and he takes death with him, and also it's the only death in this episode that isn't someone just poofing into thin air. Cass also has the honor of receiving the award for my personal favorite death in the series, which is the time he literally got popped by Lucifer. And that, my dear sexy hunters, is the list. What do you think? Do you agree, or would you have counted things differently? There's a very real chance that I miscounted at least once. What can I say? Just like you, I am just a bag of strings and pulleys. Would you want to see more episodes like this, or nah? You know where you can make your thoughts known. I'll have another video for you in September, but for now, carry on.